So if you're ever in a movie theater or if you are watching an ad for a movie on TV or something like that, you might notice that most movies have this really common style of logos. Usually it's very grandiose and big with a bunch of different effects. One movie company that does this a lot is Marvel. So you might see some of their movies and notice the 3D effects. Maybe some of them have lens flares. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to achieve that Marvel style movie logo uh, look in your designs. More on that after the intro. <laughs> Welcome to TopSpec, your one-stop shop for tech content. And if you're new around here, we upload tech videos every week and sometimes graphic design tutorials like this. So if you're a graphic designer or a tech enthusiast, we have stuff for you on this channel. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may notice that I have recently done a series of fake DC movie titles in the same Marvel movie logo style. So in today's video, I'm going to try my best to replicate those same styles uh, in a quick way to just run down the basics of how I made those logos and how you can make them as well. So this is going to be using two different software. Uh, you've got Illustrator and Photoshop. I usually make the main logo or the text in Illustrator and stylize it and make it look like an actual true logo and then I bring it into Photoshop where I do all the effects. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Illustrator to start making that logo. All right, so now that we're in Illustrator and we've created our document, we can go ahead and start working on the logo. Uh, the size doesn't matter for your canvas. I just did a basic 11 by 11. It's not gonna be printed on anything, so it doesn't really matter what size you choose. You're just making a simple vector logo that you'll bring into Photoshop. So for this, I'm actually going to be choosing my favorite DC character, Nightwing, just because it's got the blue colors and I can use it well in the top spec thumbnail. It'll align well. So we're going to go ahead and choose our type tool and we're going to go ahead and type in our text and then this will be a quick one so it might not end up turning out super great but you'll get the gist of the different effects that we can do with this. So now I'm going to go ahead and find a typeface that I like. Alright so we've got our text here and now I'm going to actually bring in the actual Nightwing logo. I'm going to put it behind the text um, and then we're going to sort of arrange these items in Photoshop once I have those things all put together. Okay, so we've put together our basic design. I've sort of got the Nightwing logo behind the text. Um, and I actually wanted to do a little bit more with this text here and maybe even the logo itself. I'm going to give it a nice 3D effect. Um, you could do this in Photoshop, but Photoshop's method sometimes is a little bit finicky and sometimes is a little bit weird. So I'm gonna use the Illustrator 3D effect and we're gonna see how that turns out. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate over this design and we're going to actually create outlines on this text. I'm actually going to copy it over again because what I like to do is create a 3D effect with the text and then expand that and unite it into one object so that way that one object can be darker than the actual text that's sitting in front. So basically we're going to select our text and then go up to effect 3D and then extrude and bevel. So as you see, it's sort of making the text 3D, but this is looking really weird. So we're going to make it look better. We're gonna start with simply just, we don't want it to be going along the uh, Y axis and we don't really want it um, rotating along this axis either. So we're going to press zero for both of those. And for this one, we're going to, we're, we kind of want to get like a drop shadow going behind or maybe even maybe that could be zero as well and we'll just increase the depth. One thing that's really cool about this is I really like this perspective uh, selection that you can pick, which basically just sort of makes it almost like the text is curving around and it sort of makes the, the 3D effect shoot behind the actual text. I think it looks really cool. So then we're gonna go like around 87, let's see what it looks like in 100. Okay, we're actually going to rotate this a tiny bit on this one. All right, yeah, that looks cool. Sometimes Illustrator's a little bit glitchy too, like if I have it at zero, like you'll notice I'm getting a little bit of like black gaps here. So just rotating it around this axis by like one degree sometimes helps that. Uh, now that we've got that done, we're going to click on no shading to get it all as one solid color so we can unite it easily and we're actually going to keep in mind this 87 perspective and one around this axis 
because next thing we want to do is take this guy over here and do the same thing except changing the um, extrude depth to zero because we're going to want to have the face of the text separate from the actual 3D effect. So we're going to press OK and here we're going to go to effect 3D extrude and bevel like we did before and we got to remember zero and I think that this was 10, 1, 0, 87, 0. Okay, so that matches and we're going to choose no shading again and in theory um, I'm actually going to expand all of these. In theory, this should be able to place right on top. Might be slightly off, but we'll fix that in Photoshop. And then I'm going to darken this up a bit just to give you the effect that I'm going for here. So yeah, then we'll be able to um, make the 3D effect a little bit better. We'll be able to add a little bit of drop shadow in and stuff like that. And I'm actually going to do the same thing with the Nightwing logo. Except I don't think I'm going to be doing the perspective, but we'll see. We'll have to see what it ends up looking like. Alright, so here we are with our finished sort of mock-up of what we want the underlying design to look like. Um, this isn't perfect, I'm doing it sort of quickly for tutorial purposes. Um, but you can definitely take your time out to perfect what you want your 3D effect to look like. If you even choose to do a 3D effect, you don't necessarily have to. Um, and then we're going to move over to Photoshop and see what sort of effects we want to add on top of this. Okay, so now we're in our Photoshop document. I made it a nice 2000 by 2000 pixels. It's pretty high resolution, um, good enough to be adding for maybe a YouTube thumbnail or a post somewhere on social media to share the work. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drag in these elements one by one. All right, so we've got everything in now, and now I'm going to go ahead and add a nice black background because this is going to be on a black background. Most movie posters will be on a black background. You see it sometimes um, with different things, but usually I'll want it on black just to get the effect that we're going for for this. So I'm going to go ahead and line up these elements to make them nice and neat and work together. All right, so here we are. I got everything lined up uh, within reason. It's not absolutely perfect, but once again, you're not really going to see it, you're going to be applying a bunch of um, effects onto it. Like you can probably see there's a little bit of a black line right here that'll probably end up getting covered up by a drop shadow or something like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess around with the colors a little bit. So I'm going to go to blending options here and I'm going to make the back of this Nightwing bird a little bit darker. Um, just to sort of blend in with the backdrop just a little bit more. Um, and then we're going to go to the bird above and we're going to add a drop shadow to give it a little bit of depth. We can play around with this a little bit. And once again, these sort of effects, they're completely up to you. Um, I'm just going to give you a rundown of the different things that you can do and sort of make it your own. This isn't a very much step-by-step -step tutorial. It's more of just inspiration of how you can take these things and turn it into your own um, and make your own movie logo style artwork. So now I'm moving on to the face layer of the text, and most of the time what I do um, with the text is I give it a nice bevel. And usually the Photoshop bevel works really well, especially on a smaller scale. Um, sometimes you can tell it's generated by Photoshop, but usually it gives a pretty good result. So we're going to mess around with that a little bit. Um, usually I go with the chisel hard. We're going to add a little bit of depth to this. Um, not anything too much. And then... Just play around with the settings a little bit to get it to work with this specific text. Okay, so now that we have our bird and our text pretty much done, you might notice it's looking a little bit almost too clean. Most logos will have a little bit of like some grit uh, effects on there, a little bit of grunge textures. So we're going to go ahead and look for some of those to apply over the bird and over the text. So typically, I, it really depends on what I'm going for. So for this, I'm going to maybe look for sort of a metallic overlay. And you can find a bunch of these. Um, this looks like the first result. We're going to see what this ends up looking like if we paste it over our bird. So we go like that. And then if we select from the drop down overlay, usually over overlay works really well, but sometimes some of these other ones look good too. So we're going to stay with overlay. 
So I'm actually gonna look for some more texture overlays because this is looking a little bit, still a little bit too clean, but it is a good start. So this is another good Google search that you can find um, free textures on. I just searched weathered metal overlay and you're getting um, a little bit more um, grungy and um, textures with a little bit more grit to it. So I'm gonna pick a couple of these and see what sticks, what, uh, what works and what doesn't. And then we can go from there and figure out what we wanna do. So at this point in the video, my camera's SD card ended up filling up completely. I guess I didn't empty it prior to filming this video, so that's my bad. Um, so I just figured that I'd do a little bit of a time lapse here and just sort of do a little bit of a voiceover while this time lapse goes on. So at this point, I was just sort of adding a weathered metal uh, texture on top of the actual Nightwing logo, uh, and then I messed around with the bevel on the logo as well so that it could match the text in front of it to give it that metallic style that I was sort of going for. And then I also messed around with the definition between the face of the bird and the actual 3D backdrop because with all the effects that I was applying, those um, those two layers were sort of getting uh, blended together. So and then here I'm also adding some black little objects to add a little bit more definition as well to really show where those points are on the 3D. And then I added a little blue background because I have a little bit of a blue inner glow in the text, so obviously that indicated that there would be a um, light source coming from behind, so I added that in there. And then I was trying to find a um, another uh, texture overlay for the face of the text, so that's what I'm doing here, I'm sort of messing around with that. And I added a little bit of a gradient stroke, wasn't really sure how I liked it, but ended up leaving it in. And then obviously what is a movie logo without a lens flare? Um, I ended up trying a few different lens flares for this. Um, so yeah, I messed around with the colors a little bit. I found a couple different styles, and then I eventually found one that I ended up liking. Um, I, I could have made it look a little bit better, but with the time that I had and whatnot, I sort of just kind of settled for that one. And then I added a little bit of a texture on top of that blue backlighting just to sort of finally um, do some final touches and make the logo just well-rounded and finished. Okay, so that's going to do it for this tutorial. My SD card ended up actually filling up halfway through, so I probably ended up doing some kind of voiceover or something like that. But that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said from the beginning, this isn't necessarily a step-by-step -step tutorial breaking down um, sort of a formulaic way to do this. It's more of just me walking you through my usual process of making a logo of this style and sort of you possibly taking inspiration from the different things that I would do for this type of logo. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you really liked it, feel free to join us by pressing that red subscribe button down below as well. Uh, we upload tech content every week and sometimes graphic design tutorials like this. So like I said before, if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I highly recommend you join us. Also, if you're interested in more content from us here at Top Spec Media, I highly recommend you follow us on Instagram. That's at Top Spec Media on Instagram. I will leave a link in the description below. Other than that, that's about it. I'm Connor and this is Top Spec. We'll see you next week.